Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Josie Latimer. I'm your host for Celebrity and Variety Talk. And today my topic is going to be about uh, makeup, cosmetics. I mean, my show can be for men too because, you know, skin is skin and men have skin also. But my topic today is about um, entrepreneurs that are celebrities that branched out and they got into the cosmetic industry. And uh, me being in the business for 40 years, I know the back end of cosmetics. I know how they get into it. And, uh, and so I know the back end of it, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. But first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for being my subscribers and tuning in to Celebrity and Variety Talk. And um, I'm your host, Josie Latimer. So thank you for all of my subscribers and all of my new subscribers. Please click like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions regarding uh, my commentary, you can leave it in the comments and I will respond. I may not get to you right away, but I promise you I will eventually get to you. Uh, listen, my topic today, her name was Jacqueline Hill. That was her name, the lady that um, she founded a cosmetic line of nude lipsticks. And so she had, um, she just came up with this idea. You see these people haven't been into cosmetics. They just jump out and they want to launch it because they may be celebrities and they have a name uh, that they want to use. However, her lipsticks, uh, she had to do a recall on all of her lipsticks because when the people purchased these lipsticks, it had fiber in them. It had some kind of plastic or metal balls in it and it had fiber all over the lipsticks. I mean, it was very scary as if, you know, like something could blow up in your mouth. So what I wanted to say, these uh, celebrities that are just jumping out with all of these cosmetic lines, you have to do research with your companies that are creating these products. Because sometimes just because they're celebrity and they may find a company that can make the products, they just go for it. They don't do any research. They don't know how long the company been around. They just go ahead and go for it. Make me a nude lipstick. So the company makes the nude lipstick for them. And then they get their containers and put their names on them and everything because of their name, it's going to sell. Uh, because I have my own, you know, line of cosmetics, so I already know how that goes. But I, I've been dealing with the same people for like 30, 40 years, so I know. And a lot of major companies also deal with these people. So, uh, but these new people that's jumping up and trying to use their name uh, and sell stuff real quick on the market, that's not going to happen because it's always going to be something going on wrong if you didn't do research, whether it's the color, the dye in the color, or the lipstick doesn't last, or it's too greasy, or it's too dry. or So you have to do research and all of this stuff. And, and then just because you made a nude lipstick, you think that's easy? No, it's not, because sometimes a nude color is harder to make for a company to make than it is color colors like this color I have on and other colors, they're easier to make because all they do is put the dye mix in there and the colors pop out. But when you're trying to do a nude, you want to make sure that there's no color so it can just be nude. And so uh, this Jacqueline Hill had this product and my God, it had like balls in it. It had, oh my God, it was like it could blow up in your mouth. Wow, that is really something, people. So now she has to return all of these products, all of these lipsticks for all of these people. And if she's online, you know, that's millions of people that she's going to have to refund because she didn't do her research from the very beginning. As I said, these uh, celebrities, they go out here, oh, I got my cosmetic line. Oh, I got this. I, and they just did it because of their name and, and that they learned how to do it. I did it because I earned it because I started out when I was 17 with Floyd Roberts Cosmetics at a little department store when I was a teenager. And then I merged with her. And then uh, she merged with Patti LaBelle as a spokesperson. And then later Iman. And so I was able to sell all of those products from a department store to my very own business by knowing Floyd Roberts personally and connecting with her. And we became business partners for over 30 some years until she turned it over and sold sold the company because she had sons and she and they you know had it for a while uh now she's older like in her late 80s so she really she's not interested you know in selling uh, the floyd roberts cosmetics and then her husband was dr roberts and i was uh trained by dr craig roberts with dermablend i'm quite sure many of you have heard of that company but with dr roberts being a plastic surgeon he was already into detail about what products would actually work 
for the skin and also to help his wife, Lori Roberts Cosmetics, to come up with all these gorgeous colors that actually uh, will work with the pigmentation of each person, skin tone, and lips. So see, you have to do your research. Just because you're a celebrity, uh, a movie star, doesn't mean that you can just jump out and just go uh, give, leave it over to someone else. Normally that's what happens because they're busy, so they normally leave it over to someone else. That someone else uh, does not have the background in cosmetics in order to know what really works and what doesn't work. They just throw a batch of stuff together, press it in a container, and they ship it out to the market, and people buy all of this junk. And they're thinking because it's a name, they're getting a good product, and that is not so. And I found that out um, during my uh, 30, 40 year, going into the 40th year of knowing the back end of cosmetics. The research of it is, is that it's not like what you think because you're only buying a name. It's just like you may go in Nima Marcus or you may go in Target and you may see the same outfit. It may have a different label because people, when they buy them from manufacturers, they can clip, put their own labels inside of the same product. You know, that can be done too. Products, clothing, uh, makeup, everything can be sold without a name and then you can actually put the label and name it whatever you want. So if you have a name, of course, people are gonna buy it because of the fact that you're a celebrity and they're thinking the research has been done thoroughly into these cosmetics. That is not so. And then people put it on the market and everybody buys the same color thinking that they can wear it. That is not so either. So you have to be an expert because it's Jacqueline Hill now, all of these people complain about all this fiber on the lipstick and they had like balls look like little bombs like could have been time bombs or something in the lipstick you guys can you imagine you're putting a lipstick on your lip and then all of a sudden this big ball pops out of the lipstick <gasps> that would freak me out so Ashley I think she probably just got out there and just had a company to just throw something together and put it out on the market so I just want to let my YouTube subscribers know that whenever you're doing and buying cosmetics First of all, you want to test it to make sure it's good for your particular skin type. Because sometimes when you buy it, you don't have time to go back and return it. You see, because of the fact that it could be a long ways where you went to buy it, or that particular store may not take it back. So you want to make sure that you get all of that straight before you go out and purchase your cosmetics. On your lipsticks, you want to make sure that you um, remove the top uh, surface of that lipstick before you try it on or better yet you can try it on your hand just to make sure that texture is what you want and make sure that it doesn't have the fibers that this Jacqueline Hill makeup had and so it doesn't you know uh, roll off on your lips dry your lips or a ball doesn't pop out like it did on all of her lipsticks which she has to redeem these people have to get their money redeem their refund from all of these lipsticks that they have purchased so well actually it's probably not a loss for her because she can go back to the uh, manufacturer and she can say look you made me these lipsticks I paid you uh, uh, five ten million dollars to put out these lipsticks for me and this is what happened so I'm quite sure they do have insurance to cover that which is why she is offering this refund because the company that made the products will probably help her in this particular situation because they're actual the the uh, chemists they're the ones that created the product for her so that's how it goes on the back end you guys and uh, I just wanted you to know and even even in skincare it's the same way so men even in your skincare you want to make sure you're getting a proper skincare because a lot of men especially our men they have like those razor bumps so you want to make sure you're getting the proper products because you can burn your skin and you can make your skin worse by trying to rub it too hard and trying to heal the problem. So you want to make sure you're getting the right product for your skin. So what I wanted to do is just tell everybody a little bit about that, that Jacqueline Hill story where she has refunded all this money back to all of these people. And you know, it's millions and millions of people online. And so I guess she just popped out and came out with this new line of lipsticks and whoever made it, it just wasn't right, you guys. 
So with that, I just wanted to say, women, let uh, I just wanted to let you know the back end of it. So when you go and choose your lipstick, you want to make sure you're trying it properly. You want to make sure that it's sanitized as well. Okay, sanitize that top 